Father, we thank you for the life and legacy of my uncle, your mother, your son, for our grandson. Father, thank you for our own Henry McKinney. Father, we pray for the family right now. That you will continue on to touch them and be with them as they go through these times, Lord God, of sorrow. Lord God, we know that you are God that does not make mistakes, Lord God. But we're so glad that you are God. Lord God, we call them on hold, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the family that has been shared, that we reach and share it. Lord God, we ask that we come, Lord God, and just pray. Right now, Lord, we pray that you continue on to be with this family through their ups and down times. As they think about their father, their uncle, their grandfather, as they think about their husband, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you put joy back into their hearts and let them know that you stay in control. Because we pray, Lord God, for this home, Lord, celebration in the name of Jesus. Give me this glory for now, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
the first thing. Because anybody, he talked about that house. He said it was many mansions in this house. Didn't he talk about it? He said it was many mansions, so it's many rooms in this house. And he said he was going to prepare a room for you. But you know anybody can't get in this house. It's some requirements to get in this house. The house that he's talking about. First is salvation. You got to make him Lord of your life. Second is sanctification. Hallelujah. You got to have the power to walk this walk. You got to have the Holy Ghost to keep you. The Holy Ghost to sustain you. Hallelujah to God. Then you got to have a separation. You got to separate yourself from the things of this world. If you want to go with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then you got to have dedication. You got to go with Jesus all the way. And he said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Thank you, God. And before you can get your reservation, I want to bring you to the one that can give you revelation. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, he is the mighty counselor. Jesus, he is the great I am. I know that your hearts are heavy, but I want to tell you that Jesus is a heart regulator and a mind fixer. Hallelujah to God. He will regulate and fix your heart. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah to God. Jesus, he would never leave you or forsake you. Jesus, he is the rock of my salvation. Jesus, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. Jesus, he is the Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah to God. My soul magnify the Lord. My soul says yes to his will and to his way. Thank you, Lord. And when you've met these requirements, it's some requirements that you have to meet before you see him. Hallelujah to God. Now, if you have met these requirements that I have given you, then you qualify. Hallelujah to God to enter in, and then you will have life and that more abundantly. You will meet your destination with Jesus. And when you meet him, you will rest with him and live with him. And then you will have consolation. Hallelujah to God. Come on, let's give him another hand clap of praise. Let's just thank him. To this family, glory. Thank you, God. To this family, I love you. Each one of you. I love you, and I want you to know to hold on to God's unchanging hands. God bless you. God, thank you. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you love the Lord, give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning. Give an honor to God always and to the under shepherd of this house, Pastor Madison, to this church family. I thank you for your hospitality. I thank you for your love that you've shown my family in this hour of bereavement. To you, Auntie, and to my cousins. We lost Patriot. We lost Uncle Bo, a man who was so strong for so many of us. A man who had so much love that it wasn't just here in East St. Louis. It was in Detroit and Mississippi, yeah, wherever he went. It was his Uncle Bo always showing how much family meant to him. You've lost your soulmate. You lost your friend. But heaven has gained an angel. And we gonna get through this. So my cousins, I know it's hurting. Let the tears flow. But after the tears flow, just pause and think about something Uncle Bo might say. 
that would have you laugh. Uncle Bo had that uniqueness to always say something at the right time to break tension. And we thank God for this home going service. But it's good to know when I use the word lost, we know where he is. Because the word of God said, precious in the sight of God is the death of the saint. I lift you up, family. And I pray that you understand he's in a better place. And even though we don't see each other daily, we will reach out and continue to reach out and lift you up in prayer. Auntie, God bless you. God keep me. Keep you is our prayer. Amen. We thank God for these remarks that have come forth. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to have our condolences to come by Sister Alicia Ewan. And um, right after that, we're going to have the family tributes and reflections two minutes we want to get these condolences can't read them all so she'll be reading about four of them and not and acknowledging all of the rest let us say man as she comes january 2021 i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, but have everlasting life. To the bereaved family of Mr. Henry McKenzie, a journey with the Lord. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road of sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We were all meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey's quicker, for some, the journey's slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. I, Deborah S. Hamilton Tidwell, city clerk for the city of East St. Louis, Illinois, along with my staff, would like to bow our heads in humble submission to the will of God. May it give you great comfort to know that our prayers and thoughts are with you during this time of sorrow. Out of the place where grief is the deepest through every shadow, may you walk in God's presence gently and graciously, led by his light and comforted by his promises and peace. Sincerely, Deborah S. Hamilton Tidwell, City Clerk. Micah M. Austin, Deputy Clerk. To my sister Ernestine and her children, Patricia Ann, Kenneth Darnell, Dor Christine, Christine, and Tasha Renee, all grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I looked up the word brother-in-law in the dictionary, one of the simple one-line definitions, the husband of your sister. Henry, our Uncle Bo, as I have grown to call him, has been in my life since I was about eight years old. We have shared good and not so good memories, just as any members of a family would share. I could depend on him knowing he was always just a phone call away. Uncle Bo was in love with his family. He was the defini definition of a good husband, father, grandfather, uncle, and brother. Uncle Bo was not just my brother-in-law. He was and will always be my brother. Healing will take time. The love you all share will help in that healing. No matter how near or far, you all have my love as well and the love of my family. We pray your strength and faith in the Lord, our God, who is our heavenly father. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills for which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Psalms 12, 121, 1 through 2. Gladys Sisson, Henry Longstreet. Nicole Sisson, Karamoko Sailor, Alnando Sisson.
Brother, condolences for Brother Henry Lee McKenzie, Sr., January 2nd, 2021. Sometimes when our hearts are weak, he gives the very gifts believers seek. But often faith must learn a deeper rest and trust God's silence when he doesn't speak. For he knows that he whose name is love will send the best. Stars may burn out, nor mountains walls endure, but God is true. His promises are sure for those who seek. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. We, the Mount Calvary Church of God in Christ, 1420 North 49th Street, Washington Park, Illinois, 62204, bow our heads to the will of God Almighty. We know that God is love. He has never made any mistakes. We, the entire McKenzie families, we wish the entire McKenzie families, especially to our very faithful members, Sister Gladys Longstreet, a sister-in-law, Brother Karamako, and Sister Nicole Seller, nephew-in-law and niece, to know that we are praying for each of you during your time of bereavement in your loss. Humbly submitted, Dr. Charles H. Rogers, Jr., Senior Pastor, Elder Charles Benson, Assistant Pastor. In memoriam, Brother Henry Lee McKenzie. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom chose a few days ago to issue the call for Brother Henry Lee McKenzie. And whereas it is written, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Be it resolved that we humbly submit to the will of God, knowing that Brother McKenzie is gone to the city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. A city where there is no more dying and no more sorrowing. He is present with the Lord. And be it further resolved that Elder Henry, that Elder Edgar P. D. Madison, and the executive board and members of the Kennedy Temple Church of God in Christ wish to extend our heartfelt sympathy to you, Mother Ernestine McKenzie, Brother DeAndre Murray, and the McKenzie family. We understand that words are often of little comfort in times like these. However, we encourage you to remember that God, even our Father, which loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, will comfort your hearts during this time of sorrow. We are praying for you. But done by the order of Pastor Edgar Madison, Jr., Kennedy Temple Church of God in Christ, January 2nd, in the year of 2021 of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge a few more condolences. The Mount Calvary Nurses Unit, Sister Arnitha Garth, President, Sister Lisa Washington, Vice President, Mount Calvary Nurses Unit, Dr. Charles H. Rogers, Jr., Pastor. Condolences for Brother Henry McKenzie. Faith is a mover of mountains, and there's nothing that can, God cannot do. So start out today with faith in your heart and climb to your dream come true. This is from the Mount Calvary Church of God in Christ Sunday School. Missionary Dorothy Wren is the superintendent. Deacon Preston Washington, assistant superintendent. Dr. Charles H. Rogers, Jr., senior pastor. We also have condolences from the Mount Calvary Church's Usher Board, Church of God in Christ Usher Board, 1420 North 49th Street, Washington Park, Illinois. Mother Billy Jean Thornton is the president. Mother Maddie Spencer, Jr., also president. And Dr. Charles Rogers, Jr., pastor. The... Um, Let's see, this one is from Justice. We have another one here from the Mount Calvary Church of God in Christ. I believe that one was read. And that's a 
Thank you all for your prayers for the McKenzie family. Amen. Thank you. The family of the Henry Lee McKenzie Sr. wishes to acknowledge with deep appreciation and love the many conference message prayers and other expressions of kindness and concern during their hour of bereavement. They want to thank you for your support. God bless you and thank you. Those other condolences that we have, amen, or if you yet have one and you have not turned it in, you may do so. And at the later days, the family would have them to read through them. I'm for sure they know everybody that has pressed their way out today is here to support them and to give them comfort and strength. Amen. At this time, we're going to have family tributes and reflections. They're coming at this time. I don't know exactly who they are, but they're coming. Amen. Praise God. Come right over here and get this mic right there. It's up on the podium. Amen. This is the family tributes and reflections. Good morning. I will be reading a poem. It's called In My Heart. I thought of you today, but there's nothing new. I thought about you yesterday and the days before that too. I think of you in silence. I often speak your name. Now all I have memories and your picture in a frame. Your memories is my keepsake. With which I will never part. God has you in his keeping and I have you in my heart. Thank you. To my aunt, Ernie and Christine, we all are going to miss us for both. I just want everybody to know, the last thing he said to me, he said, Nene, I ain't going to stop. I'm going to keep rolling. So, Uncle Bo, keep rolling in heaven, and I love you, and thank you all. Family, it's the family. We strengthen each other. That's right. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Big Ernie, as always, call it. Two minutes is not enough time for me to speak about an uncle. <laughs> Bless him. Bless him. That means so much to me. It's going to be hard for me. As I stand here and I look amongst the family, I want you all to keep your head up and continue to strive. As my Uncle Bo would want you to do. Step 10 years, my Uncle Bo and my wife talked on the phone day, on the same day because they shared the same birthday. This year was hard for us, but we're going to make it through it. I don't think my uncle knew how much he meant to me, and I did get to tell him. But he's been a big inspiration in my life and my success. And I'm going to miss you dearly. Thank you. That's him. Amen. Brother DeAndre. Good morning. I just want to say to the family, 
my family, we gonna make it. We gonna be all right. I lost my man. That was my road dog there. He was gonna call me for anything. Come fix a TV. The picture don't look right on the TV. Come program the remote control. You work today? I need my hair cut. When can you cut my hair? I was his barber. Last time I cut his hair was Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, the medicine, by the way, he helped me eat that peach cobbler you made, too. Yeah. He was the glue of the family. I think the strongest glue you can buy was is Gorilla Glue, I think. He was the Gorilla Glue. Besides his great grandkids, which I just found out he got over 30 great grand. But all his grandkids, as we was growing up, which we all grow now, but as childs, every year him and my granny took us to Florida as a little vacation growing up. And he loved Cadillacs. He used to rent a Cadillac every time. We just recently got rid of the Cadillac he had because it was so old. You about couldn't fix it no more, but he kept rolling in it though. Till one day he decided to give my granny a new car and she passed him the other one. And she told him, well, you gonna have to get rid of that thing. I'm gonna miss that man. Oh man. I ain't gonna take up too much time, but one thing about my granddad, he loved his family. He loved his family. I'm talking about all the family that stay in Illinois, he had a routine. Get up, understand, you fix some coffee, make some coffee. Either run down, play a lottery, or run to the bank. I say about three o'clock, he made his rounds to everybody house. I say everybody house. We He didn't even get out the car and knock on the door. He just wanted to sit in the driveway, everybody house. He went around making sure everybody was like, and half of us got cameras on our house. So we, we just see him sitting out there. He ain't gonna blow the horn or nothing. We be like, what granddaddy doing out there? Why you ride past the house? We see him riding down the street. Oh, I ain't want nothing. I just was riding. But it's eating me up. Because before my grandfather passed, he, he called my phone three times. He called my phone three times. He already be mad because when he called me, I don't answer. And I always call him back. And he say, why you answer the phone? I say, because you ain't want nothing. But when he just got sick, he called my phone three times. Back to back to back. I think he was trying to tell me something, but we're going to figure that out later. And he left a voicemail, four minute voicemail. I ain't hear nothing but machines beeping. Christmas Eve is his birthday. The family was scheduled to go to the hospital to wave at him 
But they took him out of regular room and put him in ICU. They did a Zoom. He had his eyes open, I heard. I wasn't on it, but I heard he had his eyes open. Everybody told him how much they love him and happy birthday. That was the last time they talked to him on Christmas Eve. And they say he had his eyes open. But we going to be all right. Grounds, we going to be all right. I'm sorry at a mess. I'm taking up too much time. This my church. I know you don't care, but look. I love that man. He did whatever for anybody. I just I gotta tell this one story because it was kind of funny, but I was mad at the same time. A homeless man on State Street. I don't know what you call them, people who be ganking people or whatever, act like they homeless, ain't got no money. But the man told my grandfather. He worked for the church up the street, and they was out trying to raise donations for the church. That's what the man told my grandfather. You know what my grandfather did? Rode to the bank. Some of them probably know, but I'm going to tell it now because I know. Rode to the bank, wrote a check for $1,000. And the man was lying the whole time. My granddaddy said, come on. We got to go find him. I said, well, you know I'm ready. Come on, let's go get him. You, all you got to do is point him out and I got you. I said, nah, we ain't going to do that, though. You take that loss and we going to gain it right back. He said, all right. But Grams, you going to be all right. 65 years they was together. Married 65 years. Met picking cotton in the cotton field in Mississippi. See, we can't even stay together a year. Let alone months. 65 years, married 65 years. That's a long time to be with somebody and put up with them. Because I swear they had their organs. It used to be so funny. Because she'll go in her room, he'll go in his room. But he going to turn around and go right back in her room, lay across that bed or sit in that chair. And they talk. But we going to miss granddad. I call him granddaddy. Everybody else calling granddaddy, granddad, papa. But that was granddaddy. I'm gonna miss that man. God called him home for a reason. And I felt like he called him home because his time was up down here. He put a lot of time in down here. Now the Lord want him to do some time for him. That's what it is. But Grams, we gonna hold you down. I swear we going we got you. I know you told me last night you gonna miss sitting outside with him in the summertime. But we gonna we gonna make sure. We're gonna make sure that grass stay cut too. But I love you. I love the family. You see, I got clean today for him. I don't even put on suits. But I had to today. I see you at a Madison. But family, we gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. That's all I gotta say, Anna Madison. Amen.
first I give honor to God and to all of you and to your pastor. I bear you greetings from the Victoria Life Church of God in Christ in Ypsilanti, Michigan. I thank God because I'm able to be here with my brother and my sister. But we must realize one thing. Talk in your mic. This talk in your mic. This is not our home. We are just pilgrim passing through. And the same as Bo left us, we're going to leave one day. But let's get our house in order that we'll be ready when Jesus comes. I want to be ready. I want to look up on his face one day. You know, my mother brought us up in the Church of God in Christ in the state of Mississippi. And I remember when we had to walk about five miles down a railroad track on our way to church. But we made it. And since that day, I've been holding on by faith, wanting to see Jesus. You all pray for me. Pray that I ever look up and be the Lord God my Savior. Bless you. God bless you. Amen. The singers are coming at this time. Amen. Mother Audrey Banks will be following them to represent our mother's board. Then we're going to hear from Sister Tamisia McCutcheon.
Can I speak to Henry? <laughs> and I tease her all the time. But we love Brother McKenzie, and he is going to be missed. But guess what? He's all right. He's all right. He is all right. Man, this is a granddaughter. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I didn't expect to come back home under this occasion, but I praise God anyhow. Um, I remember being here on this altar, praying that God would bring my grandfather to church. And God did just yes, that. Yes. So... With that being said, I can sing this song knowing that my grandfather is safe in God's own. <clears throat> me rest in a meadow's grass, yeah, yeah, and he leads me beside the quiet stream, he restored my failing head, and he helped me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. Yeah. 
in a meadow's grass. And he leaves me beside the quiet stream. He restored my belt and he helps me to do what I
Thank you, Sister Tamisia. Say, and I believe that. Hey, Amen. We watched the football game. We throw their hands up and let them know that they made a touchdown baseball game. They use their hands like this. Safe. And I can see them at the gate now. Henry Lee. How many of y'all think he's safe? Just throw your hands out. All right, I'm gonna leave y'all alone because I can work on that. Safe in the arms of Jesus. You don't have to tell nobody how you made it, but just. What did you do to make it? In? Covered every base, and I am. Been through many trials and tribulations, but I. Got to go. All right. Mm -hmm. Safe in the arms of Jesus. We're moving on. Before I mess up, Sister McKenzie. I'm thinking about Brother Henry. And I could talk by the time I went over there and he wasn't able to walk. I went in the room and I prayed for him. I said, you're going to be all right. He said, you think so? But when he came to church that Sunday, I'll never forget, he had that burgundy suit on. And he said, I said, take your time. I said, look out, man. Brother McKenzie walked back up in there when all the eyes was against him. Oh, oh, I, it, it might not have done nothing for you but I get excited when I see things that I pray for how many of y'all ever prayed for something and God answered your prayer you don't just sit there like he ain't done nothing you get excited because God did everything that he's promised in a minute. Hallelujah. Woo! Safe in the arms of Jesus. Nobody had to like you. Nobody had to appreciate you. Amen. I heard you down. Deon Clay said they took his thousand dollars, but it, it didn't really matter. It might have hurt him, but he's still safe. <laughs> coming down we have a few ministers who have not said anything I'd like to thank God for all of the ministers here at our church I'm asking that you all stand amen because we're not all going to be able to talk Elder Bradley amen Elder Robertson Elder Morgan Pastor Ewan amen thank God I see another preacher out there amen we invite them but he chooses to stay there God bless you on today amen all of you all we're here to support amen this family and most of all Mother McKenzie Amen. Mother McKenzie is a praying woman. Amen. I'll talk about you in a minute too, but let me get some of these elders on. Amen. We have here on today, Pastor Donald Buckner. This is his home church. Amen. But the Lord has him working out another ministry. And he's here with us today to come and be in support of this family. We're going to hear from him after which we've heard from him. Then we're going to hear from Elder Henry Amen. Lee McKenzie, Sunday school superintendent, who he is very faithful to Sunday school and for the uh, call-in line. Now that we've been dealing with pandemic, they call in for Sunday school. Amen. And also, after which we've heard from Elder Morgan, then we're going to hear from Elder Marvin Ewan, our senior elder here at this church. Amen. Who has served faithfully here down through the years to come. Amen. These are the ones that have not, no disrespect to the other uh, pastors and Pastor Chip. Amen. We have all Pastor Chip and Pastor Reed on today. Amen. Just so I can at least have 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to ask them to come. Please, let's be cognizant of the time. We have to go to the cemetery over in Illinois, Sunset Gardens. Amen. So we got a nice little ride. Amen. 
All right. So they're coming. Pastor Buckner's coming, Elder Morgan, and then Elder Ewan. God bless you. Amen. God bless, amen, this pastor of this church, amen, Pastor Madison, amen, to all of the persons here, the elders on the roster, to everyone, amen, in your respective places, this family, amen, glad to be here and to be a part of this celebration. I know I call it a celebration because I, in my mind, I think back to being here at this church, amen, my wife and I worked with the youth department, and we praise God for her. And while we were here, I remember this family kind of being the first ones that were a part of that youth department. And they would, I would always be amazed at Mother McKenzie's faithfulness, not just to this church herself, but even bringing them at times for youth services and different rehearsals and things that we had. And then sometimes it wouldn't be her that would bring them, but it would be somebody who I did not know by face, but somebody who I heard by name, and that was Granddaddy. Amen. Granddaddy dropped us off. Granddaddy going to pick us up. We're going to call Granddaddy when we finish. Amen. But I got to know Granddaddy one Sunday. We were here having service. And I tell you, you know, as, as Pastor Madison has said, this church showing up is a holiness church. And this church showing up is a shouting church. And I tell you, in my mind, when I look back, I can think of certain times, certain services. We had a hallelujah, Holy Ghost filled time. And I know Sister Tamisia dropped off when she said she prayed that her granddaddy would one day come to church. But I take it further than that because I remember the day, my God, when the invitation was made and Brother McKenzie made his way down to this altar and said, I want to be saved. Oh, my God. That was a shouting service. It was such a shouting service. I believe Mother McKenzie had just had knee surgery. But something happened back then because when he said he wanted to get saved, she started jumping on that bad knee. And started giving God the praise and giving him the glory. Oh, thank God for Jesus. Mother McKenzie, I know I, I called you just before the, when they was in the hospital. And we were praying. And I heard you in your prayer and said, Lord, send him home one more time. And while you were saying that, amen, I, in my spirit, I was yet hearing the Lord say, don't worry about it. Because I want you to know that even in the midst, if I don't send him home to your home where you want him to come, he's coming to a better home. And you got to understand this, that even when you feel like you're weak, that God's strength, amen, is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Just know we're praying for you. Anything you need, just let us know. We're glad, amen, to be here to celebrate with you. Amen. Just know that we are praying for you. God bless. We want to give honor to the pastor of this church, Elder Madison, and all of the ministers on the rostrum. My name is Elder Edward Morgan. I'm the local Sunday school superintendent. And I used to look up and see the McKenzie's coming in the door. And they had the most magnificent smile. And you know, um, they would always remind me how much they appreciated coming to Kennerly Temple to Sunday school. And you know, Sunday school starts at like 9.30 in the morning. And you could look up and just about see them coming in between 9.45 and 10. They would make their way over here. And a lot of times they would be right on time. But I want you to know, uh, Sister McKenzie, that Elder, Elder, uh, Brother McKenzie, as Elder Madison just said, he has made it safely home. He loved his grandchildren. He loved his wife. He loved his family. And if you knew him, you knew he loved them. And they loved him in return. You know the Bible in my closing, the Bible teaches us in St. John 3 and 16 that God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him, and Mackenzie was a believer, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He loved us so that he gave his only begotten son. And that next verse talks about God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him that we might be saved. And one of these days we're going to all, if we're still living, 
we're going to meet him in the air because the Bible teaches us that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us which are alive, we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. <clears throat> and if we're around when Jesus comes back, Sister McKenzie, we're going to meet Elder McKenzie in the air. And Bishop Ward used to say there's going to be an air meeting. And those of us that are walking around now, and all of us are going to be somewhere when he comes, when that last trumpet sound. But if we're not dead, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us which are alive shall be caught up to meet him. And Elder McKen Brother McKenzie is going to be in that number. We're continuing to pray for you. And I know how you feel. I've come to the conclusion that tears are like a relief valve. You know, we just fill up, we fill up, we fill up, but there's a relief valve. So don't worry about crying. But we know that Brother McKenzie, is, as, as he just said, he came to the altar and gave his life to Christ. And just because you don't see people come to Christ, we don't know who God has saved. But he walked down that aisle and gave his life to Christ in the presence of all of us. So we're believing what God said. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. We're going to be praying for you, and you pray for me. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. I give honor to God and to my pastor, Madison, and to all these ministers here. I bless you and to this family. Love this family. Praise God. Wonderful, wonderful family. I think back over when the times and I was blessed to go to the hospital in, in East St. Louis and pray for Brother, McK Brother McKenzie and the family. And I just praise God. It's such a loving family. He was a fine man. I loved Brother McKenzie. Beautiful personality. And I loved him. Sister McKenzie, the most faithful person in the church. Come across that bridge, nighttime, sometime the weather wasn't so good, but she was here. Very faithful person. And we thank God for her. Thank God for this family. I met several others in the family. And I love you all, and I want you to know that we're praying for your strength. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. God bless you. Elder Benson, I'm sorry. I know he's sitting on the side here. Amen. Assistant pastor of the Mount Calvary Church of God in Christ. Won't you come and have something to say? Amen. We know him as Butch. He grew up here at this church too. Amen. Let us say amen for him. Assistant pastor of the Mount Calvary Church of God in Christ. God bless you on today. We certainly give honor to God who is the head of this life and to all this great clouds of witnesses and to this family. I didn't really have to say. I just wanted to be with this family because we go back here of Madison a long time and uh, I just wanted to come yes. and one thing I love you know I know his name was brother Ma brother McKenzie but I knew him as Uncle Bo when I met him sister Pornell and the sister they introduced me to Uncle Bo and one thing I do know your life that you live. And when I was just glancing right there at the obituary, I see he was, they got married in September of 1955. And that took some personal to the Ella Benson. Who knew then that December the 10th, 1955, I was going to be born. And this brother and this family then came into my life and I appreciate it the times that we was together. And I can truly say, Uncle Bo lived the life he sing about in his song. That's one of the greatest thing. And family, you don't have to go far as for witnesses how to live holy in front of the family. These two have been the matriarch and patriarchs of the family that I do believe if you really listen and you say you love Uncle Bo, you took in the words that he said that one of these old days we're going to stand before a just and a righteous God. And he took that at heart and he lived that. Him and his wife, they labored together 
And I thank God for the life that they lived in front of Ella Benson. One of these old days on the east side of Jerusalem, <laughs> we don't know the time, we don't know the don't know when it's gonna be, but Jesus, his father, gonna tell him it's time to go. And there's gonna be a meeting over there on the east side of Jerusalem. I may be here, it may not be here. But one thing I do know, we're gonna be called up to meet him in the air. And when we be called up to meet him in the air, I believe Elko, Uncle Bo gonna say, Ella Benson, you made it. And what a great witness it could be that when all God's children get together, Oh, what a time, what a time we're going to have. You've been through the storm. You've been through the rain. Oh, what a time we're going to have. Mother, be encouraged. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he's there. Family members look up. We know what God can do. And Pastor Madison, Peter Madison, first time I've been greeting him since he's been pastor. I'm godly proud of you, brother. Love you with the love of a yawn. This is like home to me. And I praise God for the family. Hold on. Be strong. And more than anything, remember the teaching Uncle Bo gave you. God bless. I need the old. I need the yeah, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now, my Savior, I come to to thee I need thee oh I need thee yeah. every hour I need thee oh bless me bless me now my Savior, I come to, to be. Dear gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. God, we thank you for this time that we have shared with Brother McKenzie. Thank you for this family. God, we pray that you continue to strengthen them in the days to come let them know that you have not forgotten about them but god rock them in your arms keep them safe in your arms in the mighty name of jesus we pray i pray that your will be done i pray that you speak to me a word of encouragement to uplift this family let the words of my mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in thy sight oh god my strength and my redeemer and it is so in jesus name Amen. We thank God. I just need about 10 sanctified minutes, okay? I know I've been up, but Brother McKenzie wouldn't have had it no other way. I'm the MC and the preacher. He was so happy when they appointed me as the pastor of the church. He said, I knew it. I knew it, Ernstine. I knew it. I knew it. I'm happy. I knew it. And I thank God for my cheerleader, Brother McKenzie. Amen. Amen. He was a cheerleader. I always want to encourage me. Sometimes you see me beg for me to come over there just to put something in my hand. They be done collected off, but he wants to put it in my hand. Amen. I appreciate him. I appreciate the time. Amen. That he has spent here at this church driving Sister McKenzie before he started driving. She was driving herself all the way from Illinois at nighttime. I ain't saying it's all bad in Illinois now. Don't y'all heard me? Amen. It's bad over here too. But you know how it is over in Illinois. You don't stop at the stop sign. You roll.
One time the police stopped me over there on Collinsville. He said, you know what you just done? I said, I did a rolling stop. He said, you sure did. Where are you on your way? I said, trying to get back to St. Louis to my church. I said, don't do it no more. You stop over here. So, now they don't roll and stop here. They just keep going. I live here. They just keep driving. Y'all talking about over here? No, they just keep on going. I said, they don't know where to sit. Amen. If they sit right out there on that corner, they can make a many tickets. Right there on that corner. Praise God. But we thank God for him. We thank God for this season in his life. Amen. That the Lord has allowed him to be here. He's done something that all of those that are not older than him have to do. It's promise that we make it to 70 according to the scripture. It's a promise. Amen. But he was on borrowed time for 15 years. Ain't he something? 15 years before he departed. Had a birthday and then said farewell. Amen. But we thank God for loaning him to us, family members. I know you have to be proud. Of Brother McKenzie loved his family. He loved his family. Whether you knew him or not, by the time you knew Brother McKenzie, you know his family. Amen. He loved, and he always told me, keep praying for DeAndre. Keep praying for Dean. I said, I got him, Brother McKenzie. When he started coming back to church, I said, I got him now. He said, keep praying for him. Are you praying for DeAndre? Whatever DeAndre is doing or not doing, he's going to report it. And I did just what he said. I called DeAndre now. DeAndre, all right now. What'd he say? What'd he say? And he loved them little grandsons. Amen. When DeAndre wouldn't bring them, Brother and Sister McKenzie brought them to church. Amen. Amen. Sunday school or whatever. And we thank God for him. But just for a brief moment, if you would, amen. We appreciate you. We love DeAndre. We watched DeAndre grow up at this church. Amen. Beating the drums, getting upset, beating the drums, walking out. Whew. That's DeAndre. Amen. And I thank God for him. Now, he'll fight somebody for me. He told me about a month or so ago, man, outside, all that rain. He said, you go in, Pastor. I got it. And the man said, what kind of church is this? You telling me to get off the sidewalk? He said, he said I ain't, but my pastor said, you've been here a long time. Where he at? Kind of pastor y'all got just kept on going. I don't care. Well, I don't know what it said, but he went on walking out there in the rain, talking on the telephone. And I came on in here. Amen. But we thank God. The scripture, amen. Again, we thank God for all these preachers, amen, that have traveled and come to this last uh destination of Brother McKenzie. The Bible, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. I just wanted to do something kind of familiar on today. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 8. And it's so timely with the season that we just come through. I don't know about you, but I prayed and I thank God for seeing 2021. 2020 has been a rough time for everybody. A year that nobody expected, nobody ever thought would have happened. Innocent people are gone. Because of that season. Amen. It, 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 a lot of people are out of here because of that season. Whether it was a good day or a bad day. A lot of people started off with a good day. No hospital visits. No hugging. No kissing. No, You can't do none of that. But we all have a season. We all have a season. Your wellest day can be your sickest day. We all have a season. According to the Bible in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, it says to everything, there is a season. A time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep 
and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time, amen, to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time of war and a time of peace. Look at somebody and tell them we're in that time now. Wars, laughing, crying, setback, disappointment, we in that time now. Amen. If you think about it, everything that it just said, we've all had that season. We have all had to experience that season. I don't care what degree you hold. I don't care what your name is. I don't care what home you own. I don't care what area you live in. We all have experienced that season. Amen. Well, how do you say that, Elder Massey? Well, you, the uh, president said he had coronavirus. Amen. But it only lasts three days. But there's other folks that's having it that's lasting longer than three days. Let God be true and the devil be a liar. On behalf of the family of Brother McKenzie, amen, I want to thank everybody for coming and being a part of this memorial celebration. We all have a season. This passage of scriptures represents the flow of life. It talks about the flow of life. Like some seasons, the weather changed. We here can have all seasons in one week. In St. Louis, we can have all seasons. We just experienced it last week. In the 60s, down to the 30. We can have all seasons in one week. The weather changed. The season of our lives changed as well as the way that we act changed. Our rhythms changed. You know, people are seasonal. They, they, it, it dictates to them how you're going to treat somebody. Season we live in, whether you're going to like them today or you ain't going to like them. Whether they got a new car and you ain't going to like it because they got a new car and you didn't spend your money to get one. Well, go like good cars. Go like fine cars. I know another thing about Bo. Bo like to dress. Uh-uh, I thought I'd have some amen from the family. Bo like to make sure he was matching. I look understand. And don't tell them, Brother McKinney, you look a mighty short today. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> God in his sovereignty has decided, amen, it's best to bring to an end the season of life for Brother McKinsey. He thought it was best that he take him out of this world. There are some people that we know would not have lasted through this pandemic season that we came through. There are some people that got on out of here before the pandemic. They wouldn't have made it. Had to stay shut up in the house. Amen. Couldn't do this. Couldn't do that. They wouldn't have made it. But God allowed him to come through that season and at the end of that season, amen, to make a change in his life. Though one season, amen, has decided it's best to bring to an end of the season of the life of Brother McKenzie, though one season has ended, it only ends that it might give us a new season that will flourish for eternity. You got a new season that's going to carry you throughout eternity. Well, I heard one preacher said not long ago, he said, how many of y'all know anything about roses? Roses live in water for a season. And after that, they wither and they die. But in order for roses to grow, they have to have some dirt on them. Oh, somebody ain't with me. Amen. In order for a rose that smells good, have to have some dirt on them. Well, I'm for sure everybody, amen, didn't really appreciate Brother McKenzie like they should because he was a good man. But how many of y'all know that he had a season, amen, that has uh, brought him to this point where he was able to turn 85 years old on December the 24th. But on the 25th, the clock had hung up. Your season has ended. It's time for you to flourish. The news is that Brother Henry Lee is not, uh, a, it's not a passing season 
as others will have, but he has a season of eternity. He has a season where he won't have to never worry about growing old. He has a season where he won't have to never worry about making another doctor's appointment. He has a season that he don't have to worry about going into the ICU and having that path over his mouth and not able to say nothing. There is a season that he has had. Amen. It will not be a season of ups and downs. It won't be a season of ill uh, feelings or temporary favors. It won't be a season of highs and lows. It won't be a season of happiness and sadness. It won't be a season of strength and weakness. It won't be a, se a season of health and sickness. Amen. And good times and bad times. He won't have those seasons no more. But he has a season where we say every day will be howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. He has a season where he'll never grow old. No, this new season is one that will not only be with him, but it's one that will last. Amen. You don't have to worry about this season changing. Said every day is like a day of Sunday in this season. Sabbath would have no end. He'll do nothing but sing and praise God in this season. He don't even have to worry about being a part of no choir. In this season, he can sing Zion songs. In this season, he'll have happiness and joy and peace and blessings that are continuously coming. But how many of y'all know that this season that we're in is just temporary? I got a sign up there that said the year of new things, forgetting the old, for I am doing a new thing. Amen. Don't remember what you just came through. Remember where you're going. You got to have a season of knowing where you're going, who you are, and whose you are, who you're serving. You got to have a season in your life that for God I live and God I will die. You got to have a season knowing that God is on your side. Everything that everybody can be against you, but just to know that the Lord is on my side. He's enjoying this season. Henry now abides where the temporary things of earth are not even existing. He abides in a place where temporary things ain't even, it don't mean nothing. Electric bill can come do all it wants to because there's a light that'll never go out over there. You don't have to worry about the electric company coming. And I heard you, you said 65 good years. Well, all we know is they good years. We don't know when there was any discrepancy or any uh, 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 disagreement going on between him and Sister McKenzie. But all we know when they came out, it looked like it was good years. Looked like they were some good years. Amen. He wore it well. He did well. All that I know, I can just testify what I know. He loved him some Ernestine. Okay, y'all missing it. He loved him some Ernestine. And don't you know Ernestine loved him back? Probably got really happy and oh my God, he fell in love all again when he came and joined church, didn't he? For those who know Brother McKenzie in your own way, you know something about him that you'll never forget. And it's our job and our assignment to carry our legacy. Tell the people everywhere I go, you know people that wear good cologne, you know people that wear cheap cologne. Uh -huh. When you wear good cologne, it lasts with you and wherever you walk, the fragrance lingers behind you. Okay, ain't nobody with me. I said when you wear a good cologne, when you wear a cheap cologne, amen, when you walk outside and the wind hit it too much, it's gone by the time you get to where you're going. Okay, nobody got to agree with me. Wear good cologne, sometimes you don't smell it, but the folks smell it. Show smelling good today, Brother McKenzie. I don't know what that is. I got on something earn the steam, bro. Is that Brother Bo? Is that, am I talking about the right person? Amen. He was always happy. Not only was he happy, amen, about that season, but his children. Amen. Y'all can probably recall some things that he done for y'all. 
driving back and forth to work. Uh oh. He told us, how would I know it? Picking up this one, picking up that one. How would I know it? He told him. He said, bro, man, I, we, we couldn't come because I had to go and pick up such a I Don't worry about it, Brother McKenzie. You faithful. Y'all got moments that you're going to stand there and be waiting for a ride, and you're going to remember, if, if Papa was here, if Daddy was here, I wouldn't be waiting like this. I got some pots right here today that I still use in my house. Yes, I love to cook. And can I cook, DeAndre? All right. Okay. Came over my house Thanksgiving trying to watch how I cook everything. And I said, it's time for you and Chris to go on now. Amen. There's some pots that I have right now that my grandmother used and she's been gone for some time. But I still use them because it's got the season in it. Uh -oh, I'm about to turn the corner here in just a minute. It still got that season in it. Well, what are you saying? There are some things that Brother McKenzie done that your regular mechanic ain't going to do. There's some rides that Brother McKenzie gave you that you ain't going to have from your friend and your neighbor. There's some uh, 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 bills that you need some help on that Brother McKinney helped you. You didn't have to go to the payday loan store. Ooh, hello, somebody. He loved the grands and the great-grandchildren so much, he loved them great-grandchildren. And last little grandbaby, amen. Papa, what are you doing over there? What you doing? Who is that? Hey, man, she loved Boston Hill. I was talking to her the other day from the funeral home, and she said, why is he over there? What is he doing? Hey, Amen. As his pastor, I can tell you he loved to support this church. I don't care what we say we need or whatever. If he didn't have it, I understand you got your checkbook. This church dedicated to this ministry and I heard you DeAndre he went to try to help somebody else that was just his nature trying to help everybody that was his nature he wouldn't have it no other way he'd rather do without to make sure somebody else is happy okay nobody say nothing all right I know you got your mask on but you might have to pull it down and say amen I remember the time like I said when he was sick Amen. And I came over there. He had a hard time just getting up, sitting up for that visit. I said, that's okay. We helped him up. And he sit up and he wanted to get up and try to walk me to the door. I said, man, sit still. Just swing your feet on the floor. We're going to be all right. And I called back and checked on him. But I'm telling you, he got excited when he came in here and I got excited when I seen him. Because he said, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to be walking again. That's what he started talking. I said, let's put it in reverse. I'm going to get up again. My legs are going to get stronger. I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to get back to the church. And he did just what he desired to do. So we gathered here today to remember and to reflect and rejoice over the life of Brother McKenzie. Representing to us all, amen, of his kindness and his goodness that he has shown to us. Amen. Your memories of Brother McKenzie will be forever. Amen. Most of us thank God for the new season that we have in 2021. I know we're just a few days over in 2021, but you got a new season coming. Look at somebody and tell them God has something in store for me. God has something in store for me in this season. In this season, you're going to see a new something. Not something that you got to buy, not something that you got to bribe anybody, not something that you got to scheme and trip, try to get, but you got a season. Amen. Right here. Before you get out of here, you got something that God is going to do for you. If Brother McKenzie had a choice today, whether to come back or to stay where he is, he'll say, let me stay where I'm at. No breathing issues. Amen. No shortness of the breath. No one to talk to the family and can't talk to nobody. Not wanting to hear a voice and can't hear a voice. But if he had a choice today, he'll say, leave me in this season. Leave me where I am. 
Let me stay where Jesus is. Let me walk around heaven all day where they say the streets were paved with gold. Let me stay where I am today. Regardless to how you feel, yes, we might be crying over here. But don't you know over there the angels in heaven are rejoicing? Because here he has made us safe in the arms of Jesus. Remember the times that you have had with him. Don't let them go liking. Some of us, all we might have is a picture. Keep looking at your picture and ask yourself the question. I wonder if Bo would be like this. I wonder if Bo would be happy with this. I wonder if Bo would do this. Amen. Sister McKenzie, the days that are coming is going to get a little stronger. You're going to get a little stronger. I'm not going to say don't cry. You've been with somebody 65 years. That ain't something you read in no book. That ain't something you learn from somebody else. That's something you have to grow with. Something you have to grow to. Amen. Everybody in here is grown, but when you get with somebody, you have to level off your grownness. Just like you would on a job. I don't care what you know. When you go on the job, there's rules and regulations as smart as you might be. But I just stopped by to let you know that everything is going to be all right in this season. Don't give up. Don't get weary and well-doing. Don't stop. Please God first. And then make God proud of you as well as your husband will be proud of you on today. Grandchildren, make your grandfather proud of you today. Amen. Children, make your daddy proud of you today. Make him happy about what he has instilled in you. How to treat everybody with love and kindness. My sisters, you can start on your way. Amen. Henry has a season that he don't have to worry about the weather changing. He don't have to worry about uh, 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 what day it's going to rain. He has a good day every day. He has a season that everything, there is a season and a purpose under the heaven. There is a season and a purpose. It was a purpose that he stayed that extended time, amen, of 15 more years than the time promised by God. And he reached 85. We're going to miss him all. We all going to miss him. Amen. We all going to miss him. Amen. With soft music. Amen. We all going to miss him. But just know, amen, that we loved him and we appreciate his time here with us. Amen. We appreciate his time with us. And we are praying for you that the Lord will strengthen you and keep you in such a time as this. The morticians are coming. Amen. Please know that we're yet in social distancing. I want you all to help.